Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Unique and in today's video, I am going to be showing you how to achieve a flawless makeup application, even if you're dealing with texture issues like fungal acne and close comedones. For the most part, all of the products that I have to show you today are free of fungal acne triggering ingredients. If they do contain a trigger, I'll make sure to put it on the screen just so you know exactly what that trigger may be. But I've been pretty successful at using these makeup products without having any fungal acne activity on my face for such a while now that I felt comfortable bringing them to you. I am going to be showing you each and every step in achieving this makeup look. But to be quite honest with you, a flawless makeup application starts with skincare. So what I've been implementing to prep my skin for a flawless makeup application, especially if it's, this is going to be like a going out makeup situation, I start by using a mask on my face that's really gonna help clear out my pores, shrink the appearance of those pores, and really give me a flawless base to work from. So I have been using the April Skin Real Calendula Peel Off Mask, which April Skin is sponsoring this portion of the video, so shout out to them. And this mask has made such a difference in the way that my skin looks and feels and creates such a great base and canvas for my makeup products to sit on and look flawless right like I'm not putting on makeup not to look flawless unlike other peel off masks this one is actually very gentle it has a really nice jelly consistency and as we've talked about before with some of the other April skin calendula products the calendula in this is phenomenal for soothing any irritation and really calming the skin and helping you know get rid of any redness and unlike other peel off masks, this one does not hurt and is not irritating to the skin. We've seen those videos of people looking like they're ripping their skin off with peel off masks. This is not that, <laughs> okay? Super gentle, but very effective at, like I said, reducing the appearance of your pores. I tend to have larger pores around my nose, which shows up a lot more when I apply makeup on top of that. So being able to prep my skin beforehand with a mask like this really helps my makeup look a little more flawless, which is what we like to see, okay? So I'm going to leave a link for this mask down in the description box below but I actually have quite a few of them so I want to send one to you if you want to win this calendula peel off mask just leave me a comment with your Instagram handle so that I can contact you there and I also wanted to announce the winners of our last giveaway so I'll leave those winners here on the screen now I have already contacted everybody in their Instagram DMs so girl, go and look if you haven't seen it already. But congratulations to last month's giveaway. Can't wait to see who wins this month's giveaway. And without further ado, let's hop into this makeup. I'm going in with my Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I've been using this primer for like two years now and I will not let it go. It just grips your makeup phenomenally. And then for contour, I'm using the Stick Foundation from YSL, which is currently on sale. I'm just saying, and I'm going to apply, apply that with my Sephora 56 foundation brush. I'm going to be putting this underneath my makeup. So I am going to be a little bit more heavy handed because underneath my foundation, it really does give a really soft contour, like a subtle contour, which is what I really like and want to achieve with this makeup. So I'm just going to blend that out, really highlighting and focusing about right underneath my cheekbones, my forehead, and right above my chin, underneath my lips. That'll give me that pouty, pouty lips. So now that I'm all chiseled, I'm gonna go in with my foundation. I'm using the Can't Stop, Won't Stop Foundation by NYX. This is fungal acne safe. I'm using two different colors and I'm going to be applying that with a foundation brush. I have noticed that since I've been applying my makeup to my face with a foundation brush first, or brushes in general first, 
and then blending it out with a beauty sponge so that it has really given me that flawless base. It's really helped cover any texture issues. Like right now in this video, I'm having a bit of congestion uh, along my forehead. So applying the foundation with a brush before blending it out really does give me the coverage that I need without feeling like I have to excessively build up and apply a bunch of makeup on my face. Trust me, this is a game changer. Put your products on your face with a brush first and then blend it out with a sponge. I mean, just look how flawless that application looks. And don't forget your ears, ladies. Do not forget your ears. They will clock you by your ears, so don't do that. And make sure that you really blend around your nose because that's another area where um, if you don't blend properly, we can tell. And it just doesn't look good. I'm also going to bring that foundation down my neck to make it more seamless. Now I'm going to be using the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Concealer, another fungal acne safe option. This concealer is phenomenal, especially when first applied with a brush. I'm using the Precision Concealer Brush by Sonia. I'm not even going to do that to myself. <laughs> now the key is if you have deeper set eyes like I do and you have that like line underneath, in order to help with creasing, I look up into my mirror when I'm applying with my concealer brush and that really gives you that like subtle and snatch effect and also kind of gives the illusion that you don't have that line or those creases underneath without again having to pile on a bunch of concealer. I also want you to pay attention to how I am turning the tip of my sponge when I'm blending out from the base or I don't know, from the inner corner to the outer corner and how that keeps the concealer right in that area. So I'm patting with the brush and then again with the sponge, I'm not moving that concealer around. I'm keeping it in the same space, just blending it out. And that really helps achieve that like flawless snatched under eye without doing the most if that's not what you're going for. So for me, I kind of do like to keep my makeup Give me soft glam, give me coverage, but still light and airy. I don't want to feel like or even look like I'm wearing layers upon layers on my face, especially as I'm getting older. You know, we're trying to keep the uh, the layers pretty light, okay? So here is the illusion that I was trying to tell you about. I'm going to add just a little bit more concealer into that area where, you know, I do have that crease. And I'm going to take my time and blend it out, but not completely blend it all the way in. So that is where I'm going to get the most highlighted effect. But then I'm going to use the sponge. I'm not going to add any more product, but I'm going to use the leftover um product on my sponge and I'm going to apply it on the sides of my nose and that for some reason I don't know the science behind it but that really does give the illusion of my under eye area being very smooth or much smoother than it is now I'm going to apply that concealer across my forehead just in the middle there I don't have a super huge forehead so I like to keep my highlight right in between my eyebrows, down the bridge of my nose, and then my chin. I do have a bit of hyperpigmentation from, you know, a disrespectful pimple left behind. So I'm applying just a little bit more concealer and I'm actually going to use my finger first to blend out or pat it in to get the most coverage. And then I'm going to go around it with my beauty sponge to blend it all out. Then I'm gonna flip over the beauty sponge to the foundation side. I'm not adding any more product, but I'm going to go in between that foundation and concealer and contour and blend everything Thing through so it seamlessly matches like this now that we have the base it's time to set I love this powder this powder is phenomenal especially when applied using a powder puff it just smooths and hides texture like nothing else I have not touched many other powders since I've got this one 
phenomenal. Like if nothing else in this video, get this powder. Get this powder. It is fungal acne safe. It's basically just talk titanium dioxide so you don't have to worry about it breaking you out if you have fungal acne but it just smooths i mean just look at how it's smoothing and blurring the skin this is key if you're dealing with any texture issues just oh i am in love and it doesn't really crease up it really prevents creasing too phenomenal i just haven't worked with any other powder like this one and I'm basically just applying this powder to anywhere that I've highlighted. And of course, because I'm a happy girl, I have to apply it to those smile lines again. Since I've been using this powder, I do not deal with creasing in my smile lines. The sorcery, I don't know, but I love it here, okay? And then in order to further enhance that contour, I'm going to apply just a teeny weeny weeny bit of that powder right underneath where I apply that underpainted kind of contour and that's going to help enhance that area. Now I'm going to be using my favorite bronzer by Fenty Beauty. Y'all know I I stand this bronzer. It has not broken me out, but it does have a potential fungal acne trigger, so that's something you want to think about. I'm just going to be applying this like right above where I contoured underneath my foundation and then to my forehead, under my chin, right underneath my lips and this is really going to help make me look bronzed but even not so heavenly bronzed that it doesn't make sense like I want all of these products to work harmoniously together to give me the most balanced even flawless makeup application I'm using all of these products to enhance my beauty not to change myself if that makes sense and I'm not that big of an eyeshadow girl. So for the most part, I usually just apply that same bronzer into the crease on my eyelids. And that helps keep the whole look like harmonious, like it all belongs on my face because I've used the same products and the same colors, the same tones all across my makeup application. I'm applying that same bronzer down the sides of my nose. Using that same brush, I just kind of squeeze it to create a really thin um, line of bristles so that I can keep that powder exactly where I want it and it's not just like all over the place. And then I'm gonna go back and set that with just a little bit of powder, help it all blend in and so girl, Oh, that base is phenomenal. Now I'm going in with the Laura Mercier blush color infusion in the color Chai. It's such a really soft, like mauvey pink. I'm going in with a Eco Tools brush or blush brush to apply this right above my bronzer and it really helps blend all of those things in so we're going from the lighter concealer to the rosiness of the blush and then ending with that nice like warm bronzer and it really just seamlessly flows so I do look kind of like you know flushed blushing like I just worked out just a little bit just enough to give me a <laughs> nice little flush I'm applying that same blush to my eyelids because again we're working in harmony so using those same colors throughout and because most of these are like very friendly to my skin tone it doesn't look um matchy matchy it just looks like I said like I kind of did a little workout and came outside <laughs> I'm going to apply this mist so this setting mist from elf is really good for the price point it's ten dollars and baby this face will sit for the rest of the day for sure so we have to address my eyebrows i have a scar in my right eyebrow which means some of those hairs are missing so i have to do this in a way that's going to help both of both of my eyebrows kind of look like sisters, okay? So I use two products, the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pencil as well as the Benefit Gimme Brow Gel. I'm going in with that brow gel first, which is gonna add a bit of color, but it's gonna help me control the direction of my brow hairs as well as kind of fill in the area or the patch of my brow that's missing. Um, if I 
brush all of the hairs upwards, then my right brow is going to look really, really, really skinny in comparison to my left brow. So once I get to that ending area, that is where I'm going to go in with the NYX um, brow pen and fill in the missing brow hairs. I love this pen because it's so thin. It really does mimic the, the strokes of a natural brow hair without looking like I just wrote on my face with Sharpie Barker, which we've been there before. I have completely been there before. So I really do like this brow pen for keeping it, you know, soft and natural. After I apply the brow pen though, I'm gonna go back with my spoolie brush and just brush through the head of that brow to keep it all nice and soft. To clean up underneath my eyebrow, I'm going to go back in with the same Fenty Beauty concealer and I'm applying that with the same concealer brush, just keeping it uh, keeping the brush pretty flat and using the edge of the brush to be the the thing that cleans up my brow. I mean, it's quite obvious that my brows need to be done. However, <laughs> we're not doing it yet. So to blend that out, I'm just going to be using my fingers. I find that my finger blends this area out the greatest better than a tool because it warms up the product and it softens it and I'm pushing that into the front of the brow again to keep that brow a little more soft and so it doesn't look very blockish sharpie, sharpie marker ish you know what I'm saying and then going in with the same brush that I used for my contour shade didn't add any more product I'm just using that to blend those contour shades with the concealer to keep my eye nice you know keep a seamless transition using the excess product that's already on that powder puff to set the brow and set my concealer that I just applied so nothing shifts and moves and don't listen to me, I'm totally about to go to my eyes first, not my lips. So I'm applying the Lily Lashes Miami Light Falsies and I'm using this Kiss um, Eyelash Adhesive Glue. This glue will have your lashes on for two to three days if you let it. You shouldn't, but I'm just saying. It will. Now these right now have been my favorite lashes to apply. Y'all know that I'm usually a magnetic girl, but you know I'm getting better. I have found that looking down into a mirror really helps you see exactly where you're placing the lash. And look at me. You would think that these were magnetic lashes the way that I'm just throwing these lashes on my lids. There is a God and he shows me favor. And look at that eye, girl. Look at that eye. To help the lash like really sit and stay where I want it, I kind of just push it in with my the end of a makeup brush. And I mean, you know, this side's real cute, but baby, this side, huh, that's why we wear lashes. I mean, va va boom. Come on, sis. <laughs> now I'm going to be applying my same con not concealer, contour shade right underneath my eye to give it a little bit more dimension so that I don't look very um, dare in headlights because that concealer is, you know, it's highlighting underneath the area. So if you add just a little bit of depth to underneath your eyes, it really does help pull the whole look together. I'm going in with my favorite mascara right now. Mostly, I love the formula, but I think it's the brush. I have been able to apply mascara to my under lashes, my under eye lashes, the lower lash line, without completely messing up my under eye concealer. Y'all know we've been there where, yeah, let's not talk about it. This brush helps me keep in control. Then I'm going to apply it not to the false lashes, but to my natural lash. And I'm going to use, like, you know, since it's still wet, I'm going to squeeze the lashes together to really help keep my natural lash like adhered to the false lash to make it look like these could be my lashes, sis, they could be mine. I didn't show you lips, but look in the description box for why.
So here is the final look with my makeup and hair and everything else done. I love the way that my makeup turns out now. I can tell the major difference in my makeup now that I'm using brushes to apply everything and then blending everything out with the sponge afterwards. And of course, like I said earlier, flawless makeup starts with your skin. So because I've been implementing a mask such as that Calendula peel off mask that I showed you guys earlier on in the video, I have seen a difference in the texture texture of my makeup because my skin is already starting off with such a great base such a great canvas so don't forget to like this video if you liked it enter into the giveaway so that you can have the possibility of winning that calendula peel off mask all of the links to everything that i've used will be down below for you to check out subscribe if you made it this far and i will see you in another video bye